We're speaking with Richard J. Olson, better known in the Athens area as Oli. He's a professor emeritus of art at the University of Georgia. He's been retired for a few years, but he also served as a helicopter pilot in Vietnam, which is what we're going to be talking about right now. He served with his twin brother, Don, and he also served with a number of people who had already served in World War II in Korea before they came to Vietnam. And so tell us about the relationships you had with them and how that affected you. Well, when we formed in the uh, California Fort Ord base with the helicopter company there, we were forming by getting new helicopters from all over the world. Italy, Pentagon, all over because we had given the company up north as they went to Vietnam, we had given them our helicopters. So we inherited all these helicopters and all these pilots from all over the world, including presidential pilots, people that had the plush jobs in NATO in Rome and all over the place. And then all of a sudden they were my helicopter pilot buddies and they were war officers they were Second World War, Korean War people, and I was a lieutenant, so I was obviously in a leadership role with all these good men under me that were older than me and the heroes of my life, you know. And it's you had a great bond with them, oh, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, you're still in contact with yes. many of them. And they, sadly, today I found out one of us, our good pilots died. Dick Lonegan, uh, uh, Lonegan, and uh, I must pay homage to Dick. It's like I lost part of myself with him dying today because just last week I was sending him emails and etc. And we're very close and we respect each other and we have gone through some very exciting experiences together. Yeah. For example, Lonegan and I were in uh, Las Vegas area flying around and some mission with the atomic bomb stuff and we were carrying some powder that exploded in the helicopter and made it all impossible to breathe it was lime and we mm. almost crashed right in the desert if it wasn't for dick lonigan i wouldn't be talking now and he miraculously landed the helicopter when we couldn't see anything with all the smoke and lime in our face and lungs Etc. So amazingly talented. I want to pay but, yeah. homage to him today. And these are the kind of uh, helicopters. helicopters that you flew. Fort Lewis and Fort Ord is where we came from with these helicopters and other parts of the country. And then when we were in Vietnam, they were to be maintained in dust free conditions, and we had no such thing just rain and dust. I want to show a picture because you were talking about one of your buddies. We'll show the picture first and then. Tell us the name. This is your buddy that you flew with. Tom Holmes. There's a picture taken Thanksgiving, 1962. There's a painting I made of him years later. But Tommy Holmes was one of the great American pilots, one of the first black pilots in helicopter flying. And he also took a picture of me when I was in front of some Vietnamese troops loading aboard these helicopters in a area that was flown over to an underground arsenal and I got wounded. Now you told me in a previous conversation that you actually went over to Vietnam for a very specific reason that was kind of different than many other people and it relates to your being as an artist. Well first of all I was this wrestler <laughs> from college and then it was in the army physical education in the army and then thinking of having an exciting romantic life like Hemingway or somebody but I was an artist inside and wanted to be like Hemingway and grab all the experience I could have. I was an adventurous person. If I get killed in the process that's part of the game but I wanted to get that adventure and it was a very thirsty uh, young man. I was actually about 27 years old here. Yeah. And that, that experience did inform your entire life and artwork after that, including some of the first works were, were very graphic and, and, and more representational in, in a sense of your experiences. What do 
do you hope that you that people would see from some of these? Some of them could be well, when, when there are prisoners that are captured right off of the battlefield and they're in front of you, they were going to kill you a little while ago. And when they're in a condition of their prisonership, here's a dead Viet Cong, here's two prisoners, but it's human. In other words, with the dead Viet Cong, it's, he's asking, why me? It could be you. And with this, I'm thinking of the history of art and Goya and everything, and it's right in front of your eyes. It's the human condition. And, you have and I have as much yeah. sympathy for the enemy as that he has for us. They're as close as you can get, the enemy of each other, you know, in warfare. Yeah. And, You're and you really had, close. You had quite a few of those early paintings um, put up in an exhibit, Vietnam Revisited. Yes. The paintings from 1963 to 1967. And many of them are in uh, what's called the National Vietnam Veterans Art Museum. Yes. And is this one of this one? This is museum? one of the paintings in the museum. This is the book about the museum, and it's got the artwork of soldiers in the uh, art museum. And these are artists from Vietnam that have put these paintings out there, not for sale, just to make them, to see them. Yeah. And so they got collected and it becomes some museum. Now one misconception you said that many people think that this kind of art derived from war experiences was done for therapy and sim sim simple catharsis. But yours wasn't really. Mine was done in the search for being an artist. And it was subject matter. And the more I could remember of it, especially in 1963 when I returned back and started painting, the subject of Vietnam became the voice that I could use to make up painting. And by that, I could learn to paint. And so that it was very simple to have these f memories fresh and the fear of the enemy and all that stuff in your mind while you're painting. And it participated in all the history of art anyhow. And so it was good subject matter. And, and it, you was, see, yeah, it you seemed to me it took three years to get it out of the system. By that time, I had an MFA. Yeah, I think you also have a quote that's on your website of someone who, Larry Pomeroy, who was a correspondent during that war. CBS who, war correspondent. Who said something about you that you, you say is, is, is very important. He said that uh, your studio, if you're in it, it can inform your paintings, but your if you have PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder, or any Vietnam period era memories in your subconscious or unconscious will also uh, inform your work. And, and it has even to this day, even into some of your latest abstract works. Hasn't that is it? true. Very good. Excellent. <laughs> and also, even if I would paint flowers, Vietnam would be inside that. It's it would come out in, as a natural form of expression. Here is, for example, a, an old painting of some prisoners. It helped me get in grad school because they said, oh, you, you're making positive and negative shape. Well, I was painting the prisoners. <laughs> and so that as I inform myself about the human condition, and all these people are from different parts of the Asiatic world, and not just wow. North Vietnamese, they're all. Wow. So it puts a hair on the back of your head when you're near people that are uh, in this enemy hostile condition. But it's exciting to have it as a subject matter and it informs the painting and it informs everything. And it went to now you're doing some interesting things where you're basing, you're using techniques and past paintings to create new work but it's still so much of it has a layer of Vietnam. Like everything instance, is inside yeah, itself. Kind of mirror within a mirror within a mirror sort of. <laughs> yes. Here's the door of the helicopter. Oh. It's as old as the first start of my first paintings. But out of the door of the helicopter is the vista of rice paddies and dikes. Oh, and, yeah, you can see and, the water, uh, blue water there. And landing, landing pads in the night and all different kinds of things. And Tain Inn, the mountain Tain Inn, which is part of the whole uh, countryside that I flew with. There's Tain Inn. Mui Bad, Nui Baden. Look at beautiful, Black Mountain. beautiful landscape in, oh. in what we can, you know, still almost under, think of under as Under this are all the tunnels from the ancient tunnels of the Asian world. And out of the tunnels they would pop up and they could hide there. 
regiments and everything in hospitals. In fact, I got wounded going into an underground arsenal where we were attacking into an ar arsenal. We flew were you, were the you? South Vietnamese around. I was in the war before the Americans got into it. In other words, I was involved with helping the South Vietnamese cure the problem of their uprising in the countryside. And Ho Chi Minh was into his plans of taking over the South. So you were kind of there the, the transitioning from the French yeah. into the more of the yes. American Yes, and as a Frenchman, then the blue eyes or the whatever eyes and the hair, the Viet Cong, the Buddhist Viet Cong, of the countryside could get the countryside Buddhists to line up against anyone with hair on their arm. Oh. That equated to the French, the colonialists, so that automatically you had people against you without even thinking who uh, you were. Uh, you know, we were there to help them. So in 1994, when I go back to Vietnam, instead of black pajama, rice fatty farmers, with the shotguns. There are people waving with uh, Kmart clothing. Mm -hmm. America, uh, Levi's, America is completely one in the countryside. They love us. They wish we won the war. So the, you won their hearts and minds, yeah, but not necessarily but they the geographical be, land. They, they right? haven't got the same freedom. They can't move yeah. around. They, yeah as we do and we we come to them and give them uh blessings of freedom and attitudes how did that make you like feel us. going back to visit oh, did perfect. that help oh i help had you? all the Viet Cong were hugging me <laughs> and this north vietnamese people the north vietnamese army people they were all wonderful yeah. and had us in their houses for dining i was even sitting with a uh, person that was working with Ho Chi Minh, and he had drawings of American prisoners. And we were as tight as could be, yeah. just artists together in the world. Now, you don't feel quite as welcome here at home, though. You've said that at times you feel stilted and like you can't really talk about it with everybody. It's and, not the kind of subject that uh, people are involved with. There's a political slant to either for Vietnam or against Vietnam, against war, for war. I'm not a warmonger or anything. I am involved with the humanism of the planet, you know. And the wars that occur are warrior things. And they're part of the civilization of the earth, you know. And for example, a friend of mine, Joe Fornelli, was a, a door gunner in one of the Hueys in Vietnam in 1965 and he was in some harrowing experiences but he was saying that going into the landing zone the only thing you are is an eye and a trigger finger warrior going into the landing zone and the only thing you can take out of that landing zone is the warrior and the artist mm. And that's have, all that's left. And you have some another slogan you, that you use. What is it? The, the tires? You're kicking the tires. Kick the, <laughs> kick the tires and light the fires. <laughs> and that's what. And you that's how were these driving. helicopters were. They were all tires on the oleo struts. Yeah. yeah. Here is a, a, a film that I had from a camera that was not quite clicked over, so it oh. double exposed. So in 1995, I rediscovered this. This film that so it was, became artwork out of a photo I was like you didn't even take, expect. <laughs> trying to take pictures of war, and I wondered how it felt. You know, yeah. if the other guy was flying, you yeah. could take a picture, and so it eventually becomes. This is me standing in front of how big the painting is. And some of yours are called the yeah. wall, yeah. and they yeah. represent things against the wall and their wall size. So. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us, Oli. We really, really yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> you too. Great, how you are. Thank you. And to your dad, too. He's a great man, too. He was right a World War II POW. I thank you yes. very much, Oli.